We have uh, studied uh, the analysis and design of control systems using root locus based techniques. Over there, uh, we had a time response of the system and the design specifications were provided in time domain. That is uh, the uh, overshoots and rise time, settling time, etc. Uh, we start our uh, next part of the course, which is uh, the analysis and design of control systems using frequency domain approaches. So the basic tools uh, which are utilized uh, to analyze uh, and to design control systems in frequency domain, uh, these tools are body diagrams, polar plots and Nyqu Nyquist plots. So first we shall learn how to obtain these plots and then we shall study that how we can utilize these plots for the analysis and design of control systems and in today's lecture we shall talk about uh, the first diagram that is the body diagrams uh, in today's lecture and in the next lecture we shall learn how to sketch these body diagrams so uh, first thing which we need to know is that why do we need uh, this new analysis and design technique you are not quite expert to analyze and design controllers using root locus uh, techniques so why do we need this new approach uh, for that purpose? So this uh, approach has uh, a few advantages. Firstly, uh, obtaining mathematical model is easier and more accurate in frequency domain. You have already performed one experiment over there. You have identified the transfer function uh, of a system using frequency response of that particular system. So those mathematical models are sometimes more accurate compared to those which are obtained by identification from uh, step response of the system. Uh, there is another advantage which is a very very important advantage of this approach that is robustness issues and re relative stability these can be addressed using frequency domain approaches. You know that whenever you identify uh, a mathematical model for a system there are many uncertainties uh, even if you model it still uh, there are some uncertainties for example some parameters may not be accurately known for example you have a spring and spring constant may not be accurately known uh, there are many more uh, other uncertainties uh, so whenever you uh, uh, write a mathematical model for a process that is never 100 percent accurate there are always uncertainties in the mathematical model, inaccuracies in the mathematical model. So how to design a controller which can work with that particular system even in the presence of those uncertainties, that thing is called robustness. Robust against uncertainties and also robustness against uh, environmental effects. There are, uh, for example, you want to change, uh, t control the temperature of this room and you model this uh, room and uh, there can be uncertainties and disturbances. What is disturbance? For example, opening of this door, when this door is closed, uh, you have uh, other dynamics and when this door is opened, you have uh, effects from outside that uh, thing as well. So that is disturbance. So robustness against disturbances and uncertainties, those can be uh, easily handled with these frequency response methods. And um, uh, normally students ask, uh, ask this question, which approach is superior? Frequency domain approaches are the uh, time domain approaches which we have studied earlier. So the answer is, uh, you, you cannot say this approach is superior to other one. Uh, both of these approaches work to complement each other, right? So, so you can get the advantages of frequency domain approaches and you can also get the advantage of time domain approaches and overall design using uh, uh, the benefits from both the approaches. So next we should know that what is frequency response. So you are well familiar with linear systems. Linear systems can always be uh, modeled by uh, linear dynamic systems can be modeled by a transfer function. Uh, you learned that linear systems are modeled by linear differential equations and then you can obtain the transfer functions. Linear systems have one property. Uh, when you apply a sinusoidal input to that system, 
the output of that system is also sinusoidal at the steady state that is you apply this sinusoidal input with amplitude uh, mi and the phase angle phi i uh, and the frequency of the sinusoid is omega uh, then uh, the output of that system is also a sinusoid and uh, uh, that is sinusoidal input results into sinusoidal output at steady state this word is also important during transients you may have some different characteristics however at steady state if you apply sinusoidal input the output is also sinusoidal what is the frequency of the output sinusoid the frequency of the output sinusoid is the same as the frequency of the input sinusoid however the amplitude of the output sinusoid and likewise the phase angle of the output sinusoid that may be different from the amplitude uh, amplitude of the input sinusoid and phase angle of the input sinusoid and um, uh, you also uh, know this uh, representation for sinusoidal signals you generally write the amplitude and the phase angle rest uh, of the things are understood uh, that is whatever is the sinusoid uh, frequency of the input sinusoid the same is the frequency of the output sinusoid for example uh, you have this mechanical system uh, and for this mechanical system the transfer function can be easily obtained uh, this uh, is the transfer function with uh, the mass uh, equal to 1 and this uh, k and fv uh, both of them equal to 1 so this is the transfer function and uh, i have simply simulated this system in matlab uh, applied uh, an input sinusoid and what we can see is that the output signal uh, this uh, the other color uh, brown color that represents the output sinusoid output signal that is also sinusoid at steady state it may not be sinusoid during transient you can see over here it is not uh, the sinusoidal signal however at steady state what is steady state when time tends to infinity uh, theoretically uh, times tend to infinity practically when times become very large and when the transients die out uh, so you see that you have input sinusoid and the output signal is also a sinusoid uh, what is the amplitude of the output signal that depends upon the frequency of the input signal and you can see that the output is also phase shifted version of the input so how much phase shift is provided uh, by this system to this input sinusoid that also depends upon frequency for example the same system is simulated for uh, another frequency uh, a frequency which is higher than this particular frequency so you can see that the amplitude that is the gain provided by the system to this particular input that is different from the gain provided by the, the same system to this input signal likewise phase shift uh, provided by this particular system uh, is dependent upon the frequency of the input sinusoid so uh, amplitude and phase angles depend upon the frequency of the input signal this ratio uh, that is the gain uh, amplification or gain reduction that is given by the amplitude of the output signal and the amplitude of the input signal uh, this uh, ratio uh, is given over here likewise how much is the phase shift phase shift is equal to phase angle of the output sinusoid minus the phase angle of the input sinusoid again this phase shift that depends upon the frequency of the input signal so this uh, this thing is called the magnitude frequency response of the system and this thing is called the phase frequency response of the system uh, and the two information written together this is called the frequency response the uh, magnitude frequency response and the phase frequency response written together that is called the frequency response uh, of a system so if you are given with uh, the transfer function of a system the frequency response of that system that is g of j omega that can be simply obtained by substituting this laplace variable s to be equal to j omega where omega is the frequency and uh, g of j omega 
that is, uh, this thing is a complex number. We can write it in the form of magnitude of that complex number and the phase angle of that complex number. So frequency response of a system uh, for which you are given with the transfer function that can be simply obtained by substituting S equal to J omega.